Hey, Adriana. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. I've I've always been uh, I've always been a delegate of outsourcing mm-hmm. because number one, I feel like it's really important for small business owners to learn how to outsource. And number two, I'm really lazy, so that's why I like outsourcing. <laughs> so that's before, a good combo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's helpful. So before we start, I would love it if you tell the listeners and the viewers something about yourself that they'd probably be surprised to know about you. Oh, goodness. Okay. Um, So I started my first business when I was 14. I started making MySpace layouts um, because that's how I learned coding. But my, I then started my second business at 17. I used to make hats. So I went to school for millinery, which is hat making, which is something most people have never heard of. Um, And that's how I helped pay for college was actually uh, making like, I used to do the really big Kentucky Derby hats, like the most ridiculous, the better. Yeah. So I used to go to the Kentucky Derby, see my hats, and then they would see me and be like, are you still in high school? And I'd be like, yeah, and I made your hat. So that's how I... uh, that was my story before I started working in weddings at 18. So, you know, oh my gosh, that's some crazy. fun stuff. <laughs> I, can't, I can't imagine myself being 14 and doing all these things. It's, yeah, it's, it's too young for me. My... <laughs> I'm a late bloomer. Let's just say I'm a late bloomer. No, I just was, I was making MySpace layouts and friends were like, hey, I'll buy one from you for 20 bucks and... I'd send them a PayPal link. It was very that's not crazy. official in any way. <laughs> hey, but that's good. That's good that you are inclined in running a business really early in your life. That's cool. And it's not yeah. even like a lemonade stand. It's just like business. That's great. <laughs> yeah, I've always kind of just worked for myself. So, um, I've so the the what's the correlation between the Kentucky Derby hats and like the actual British Royal, you know, when there's like a Royal wedding, I see all these hats It kind of like reminds me of the Kentucky Kentucky Derby and vice versa. Is there like a correlation to it? Would you know? So a little bit. So that's actually, so when I went to school to study, you typically what you study is like European millinery because it's very popular in England and Scotland and those areas where they actually keep their the tradition alive and it's part of like your fashion statement it's definitely not a thing in the U.S. to an extent which is why it was hard finding a college that even offered it because it's not super popular but I think with the Kentucky Derby I think it was one of those things where they were trying to just look super wealthy like it's a money status so they just became bigger and more exuberant and then next thing you know it just became more ridiculous year by year and now it's you'll see this, you'll see some people who do actual like beautiful hats and you'll see some people who wear like the most ridiculous things on their head. So it's kind of interesting how it's done in the States versus like, if you go to a horse race or any kind of race in the UK, it's going to be not the same exuberance of hats. <laughs> yeah. But it's, it's crazy. Like the, the bigger, I guess the bigger the hat, the fancier the person <laughs> Yeah, I guess the more exciting you are, because they get expensive. Hats are actually pretty expensive. So kind of shows like a status in a way too. Oh, okay. So um, now that we we got into, well, pretty much how you got into starting your own business, let's talk about how you got into the industry and what you're up to right now. Yeah, of course. So I got started working in weddings um, at 18. So I just worked in bridal shops, kind of the usual, like David's Bridal, a few private shops, um, doing sales and retail. And then my senior year of high uh, college, um, I decided I met someone who was a wedding planner in Savannah, Georgia. So my senior year, instead of finding a job, I opened a business <laughs> and we opened a wedding planning, bridal boutique, and eventually florist company. So we were like an all one stop. Like you buy your dress, you get, we plan your wedding. We do your floral and decor. We got into rentals. Like it was just one of those all in one. Um, so I did that for a few years. Um, and so that was in Savannah, Georgia. I 
hit burn out like majorly because we were working seven days a week and it's really fun for your first few years. And then after four years of like never having time off, it really starts to get to you. And I just didn't see it. I was in a bad business partnership and it was just one of those, like, I got to do something else. So I ended up selling my part of the business and working just a regular nine to five, which was actually the first job I ever had that was like legit where I wasn't like a contracted worker. Like it was my first, like you get a paycheck with a salary. (laughs) I was like 27 and I'm over here like, wow, health insurance. Um, and I just was always wanting to go back into the industry, but I was kind of like in this weird hiatus of like, what am I doing with my life? And I had a lot of wedding planning friends, obviously from, from my years of doing it in Savannah. And they just were saying how they were looking for someone called a virtual assistant. I'd never no idea what they were talking about, but everything they said they wanted, I was like, I know how to do that. Like write blogs. I how to make our whole website from scratch. I did all the SEO. Like I had to self teach myself everything anyway. Cause we started a business. Like I was 23. I had no idea what I was doing. So I was like, Oh yeah, I've, I can figure it out for you. So I kind of just started working with friends and within my first like two months, I started making thousands of dollars and realizing this was a job. So I first kind of was like, I don't know what my life is. And then I started realizing that this was a huge need that wedding professionals did not have time. And I understood because when I was a wedding pro, we had a team of people and we were still the ones blocking and we were still the ones answering calls and stuff. So, you know, it's just a lot. So I just kind of started doing it for friends. And then a few months later, I ended up quitting my full-time job. And now it has grown into more of an agency. So there's a team of us. I don't do it alone anymore because again, I'm only one person. I can only do so much. So now um, I run Ava and the Bee. So we do content and digital marketing just for wedding professionals. So it's, we have niched down just to wedding pros since that's what we know. Everyone on my team has wedding experience. It's kind of like a requirement to be on our team as you've had to have had like wedding experience. Um, and so over the last four, four years, going to my fourth year of business, we've helped over 86 wedding pros. So it's been a fun journey to get here, but I love it. Well, 86. So if your agency is, if correct me if I'm wrong, your agency is uh, digital marketing and VA or just VA? Okay. So we do the reason, so there's so many terms for what we do in terms of like virtual assistant or marketer. The reason I don't use virtual assistant as much is because I don't offer hourly retainers, which is typically what you're going to see with a virtual assistant. So when we first started, we were like $30 an hour, 10 hours a month type of package. Now, because we do like strategy and six month strategy sessions, like we're a little bit a little bit more of what we do. So it's definitely a little bit more of the marketing focus versus general. So I've just pivoted my business, but there's definitely a virtual assistant is kind of the same word for it. I've just kind of pivoted what we do in particular to be a little bit more niche versus just like general admin work that we started with. Okay. So what are the most common misconceptions about VA? Because in my head, I... I see VA, virtual assistant, and for me, at least when I was starting out, when I was doing outsourcing, I'm like answering the phone calls, answering emails, you know, what's the most common misconceptions about VAs? Oh gosh, there's so many because I had all of them when I started to. <laughs> so one of the biggest misconception is that you you can't give off certain tasks. So a lot of times we do think of those things like hourly calls or like, hourly packages, but really virtual assistants can be everything. You can find a Pinterest expert and you can find a website, SEO, blogging. I mean, there's so many different terms that they can use. So maybe a lot of our clients want social media help. That's huge. That's a whole industry. That's a whole niche of virtual assistants that a lot of people don't realize we can do is that you can, I think sometimes you think of it as like, oh, they're just generalized. They don't have a skill but we do like all of, so I have a course where we teach students how to start their business. At least a third are wedding pros who are 15 years into the business. And they're like, oh, but I don't want to just offer admin. I'm like, perfect. Like we're kind of reshaping that term virtual assistant to include 
everything you're great at. So a definite let that's like a misconception. Another one is that we're like replacing employees in your business. And that's not always the case. So, dep- you know, we're a contracted employee. I mean, we're contracted, we're not an employee. So we're like, we're 1099. Some people think like, oh, I, I can't outsource because I have to cover wages or, or health insurance. No, we're 1099. I cover all of that for myself. And so does my team. So we are not necessarily just like a short-term staffing position, but we can be a long-term strategy without having to bring someone into the office. And I think this last year has definitely taught us that we can work online because my first three years of business, people didn't understand what I did. They thought I was some kind of weird online scam because I was working from home and I had to keep being like, no, I can run your social media from home. I don't need to be in your office. And I think wedding pros are now starting to see that oh, they don't have to be in my office. Like I can still outsource. Um, And I think a lot of times we see online websites, like you mentioned, like Fiverr or Upwork. And it tends to like, just put a lower cost on what the prices end up being when you're outside of those platforms. So a lot of my customers are like, oh, I've worked with someone on Fiverr and I paid them $6 an hour. Well, that's not really like an actual salary that someone can live off of. So we have to start educating that $30 an hour is a lot more reasonable. But, and while it sounds like a lot, when you're actually getting outside of a a freelance network like that is you're actually finding someone who probably has way more expertise. So a lot of people when they are on Fiverr and Upwork, they're probably new. That's where we all get started. You're not probably getting your money's worth because you're not actually working with someone who's invested in your business. And you get a better return on investment when you have a team member who's committed. I know my client's business like in and out. I know their high seasons, their low seasons, their ideal target. I could give you a 10 minute spiel on every client and get them down to a T because that's why they hire us is to be that connection. So if you're looking for like a few random small tasks, it's fine. But if you're looking for like, I want someone to be on my team to support us, that's when I suggest to start look outside of those platforms. Okay. Well, to be honest with you, I've tried all of the outsourcing platforms And the one thing that I've noticed is when you go on Fiverr or you go on Upwork, you don't get um, a person that's the same as your business. Like they, Mm -hmm. yeah, you're right. Yeah. Like you're from the wedding industry. So they understand, you understand what needs to be done as opposed to like finding a random person who can, you could, you know, you could pay like six bucks an hour and do these tasks they you guys understand what to do and you talk like us like you talk Mm -hmm. like you're from this country so i I think that's the biggest the biggest difference like if people are okay with that then yeah six bucks an hour is worth it but you know if this is your brand like this is your business and you're supposed to stand out not negatively you know in a positive way so I, 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 I've experienced all of that and that's the biggest, biggest, uh, I feel like the investment is worth it when you get someone from your place, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's also just, like you said, being able to trust them, you know, like you're, when you're planning a wedding or working with couples, it's a, it's a lot of shared private information in a way, like it's, it's just natural like that. Um, you know, we know a lot about our clients' business. So you want to make sure it's someone you trust, right? That you feel comfortable speaking in your voice or if you have specific lingo you want to use or words you want to avoid. Like it's, you're going to find that in, in a separate person outside of those platforms a lot of times. I mean, some some of my students are in those platforms and I'm always like, try to get yourself out of those because I want you to find clients that are wanting to connect with you and like, And they also grow with you better. So a lot of those platforms, you're not really able to like grow with them, right? You might not get the same person twice. They might get off it or they might be booked. What's great is when you go with like an outside person or an independent person is they can grow with you. They can start to see those holes in your marketing or see holes in your, whatever you have them do, your admin or like, let's say your workflows are a mess. You can have someone come in and say, your workflow is a mess here's the holes, here's how we can fix it. By the way, let's also tackle this. So it's kind of gives you that partnership. And I know a lot of wedding professionals, we tend to be more solopreneurs. So it's kind of nice sometimes to have a third party who's in the wedding industry, but not at the wedding every day, because 
yeah, it's kind of nice to get that like step back view of like, all right, let's take a bigger look at your business. We're not like, you know, in the day to day, which is actually, I think, beneficial for our clients. Oh, yeah, for sure. That's why I love talking to people who are not in the industry or not in the wedding video industry, because you get these perspectives and you get these very objective perspectives perspectives that would really help you run the business properly because it's you know expertise um since we're already talking about that i would love it if um you tell us why outsourcing is important like how important is outsourcing oh it's really important especially when you start to get to the stages of your business with growth Um, A lot of times when people come to us, they've been in business for a few years and they're starting to see that growth take off and they're realizing I can't do it all by myself. So it can also, I also, I know for a fact our inquiries are exploding because weddings will happen again. I know it doesn't feel like it in some areas, but 2022 is I think going to be insane because everyone has pushed their wedding back. I'm a bride. I had to push my wedding back. So I think what I tell a lot of vendors now is start thinking about outsourcing earlier rather than later, because it's easier for you to have someone not have a ton of tasks than it is for you to get that to that stage where you're like, here's my dumpster fire. Can you put it out? Like, it's better if you bring someone in, because a lot of times people are worried about outsourcing. They're like, oh, I don't have enough stuff. Yes, you do. (laughs) Yeah, I guarantee you have at least two tasks that you do every week that is either not getting done. Like you just don't do it. You're not good at it because we're not all good at everything. Or maybe it's outside your zone of genius and you just cannot get into that mindset. Those are tasks you can outsource. So definitely when you start getting into that stage, you're like, okay, this is becoming repetitive. Balls keep getting dropped or I keep, I can't keep up. That's when you should start looking because when you get too far gone and you're in that dumpster fire stage, we can help, but it's going to be costlier because you're going to need a lot more services and it's going to take longer. So we can only solve so many fires at once. So it's almost good to start kind of thinking small in a way, like what are those little steps? Because I mean, you can outsource literally everything, editing for you guys, um, accounting, bookkeeping, workflow, client management. I have a few clients who have someone especially for companies that maybe have a team where they have five videographers or, or five photographers. That's a lot of people to handle on you. So like we have one client where she runs an elopement package. It's 10 different touch points. She has someone who's hourly, who's like a virtual assistant, who is in charge of that. She makes sure all the vendors are booked. She communicates with the client. She books the client. She's not necessarily taking the sales call because I know that's an important piece, but you can have a virtual assistant take every other piece. You can have them send pricing, send information. You can have a virtual assistant onboard them as a client. You can have the virtual assistant be there during the process. You can have them be the one blogging it at the wedding. Pretty much any point of your job, you can probably outsource to somebody and there's someone out there who is an expert at it. And, you know, I I just feel like having having something like this um, at the start of your business is going to inspire you to it I, I feel like the, we're, we're, our business is 10 years old and I think the first six years was just like what are we gonna do you know we're just still trying to figure out just like what I told you earlier we're kind of like a run and gun uh, <laughs> kind of business owner <laughs> so <laughs> So I wish when we started out in 2010, I wish that we had advice like this because it's so valuable, you know? It's just- yeah, no, I agree. And I think a lot of times, like I said, a lot of times people don't think about outsourcing until they're buried, until they're at burnout. It's like you, you go, 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 go. Wedding seasons are crazy. You know, you work 17 million hours in a day. And then you hit burnout. And that's when I, a lot of, a lot of our clients come to that, that stage, which is normal. You get to that stage where you're like, I don't know if I can do this anymore. Like something has to change. So if you're willing early on to bring someone, even like I said, for something small, 10 hours a month, I mean, that's 10 hours. That's actually a lot of your time. (laughs) Like imagine 10 hours. And also that virtual assistant probably does more in 10 hours than you would do in 10 hours. And that's not a mean thing. It's just zone of genius, right? I can write a ton of blogs in 10 hours. My clients, 
maybe one blog. I can write a 1500 word blog, 2000 word blog in an hour, but that's because that's my zone of genius. So like, imagine being able to outsource 10 hours. It's really like 15 or 20, really. That's crazy. I can't do blogging. <laughs> that's why I do video. <laughs> I'm like, let's, let's just post the video and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's our bread and butter is blogging. Most I love it because I just it's my my love and passion, but I totally understand. I have a qu- I'm gonna have a question about blogging in a bit. Mm-hmm. Before I get to that, I wanna ask you for someone who's starting out or you know, someone who's listening who's already had the business for a while, what are the most obvious services that you immediately need to outsource? Yeah, of course. Are there any? Yeah, there's a few. So it kind of depends on like what all your marketing strategy is. But for us, marketing is an easy one. So blogging, Pinterest, social media. Those are three easy ones. Facebook even. A lot of people overlook Facebook, but Facebook is actually a huge lead magnet for a lot of our clients that is just overlooked. We just are like, oh, Facebook. It's actually a really undervalued Um, platform. So depending on where, what I always tell people is look at where you're getting your inquiries and your leads from. So take a look at your Google analytics. If you don't have that set up, then that's step one. (laughs) If you don't have Google analytics, step one is you hire someone to set it up and look at it for you. And then some easy ones are, like I said, those easy marketing. Um, Some other easy ones are even just email management, um, CRM management. So if you used Upsado or HoneyBook or one of those platforms, Usually you can find someone who spends maybe five or 10 hours a month making sure contracts are signed, sending follow-up emails, you know, little stuff like that, that again, you shouldn't have to think about. I mean, and then you can get as detailed as I have some students where they are wedding planners as well. So they offer timeline assistance. They offer aisle planner assistance. So it can get really as, as detailed as you want, but usually some of the easiest places are like email and client management, the stuff that you don't have to like be the touch point. And then a lot of your marketing, because so much of a wedding business is marketing. Like how else are you going to get clients? I mean, word of mouth, yes. But a lot of it is your marketing. And that tends to be one of the first things that people like to outsource as well is because there's so much to do. Like after every wedding, you have to think about editing the video, calling the images, like there's 17 steps. The last thing you're going to do is write that blog post, post it to Pinterest, post it to Instagram, you're going to think about that last hire someone like me. Who's going to think about it before the wedding even happens. I mean, if there's anything that the pandemic has done to my business, it's, I was able to sit down and look at, Oh wait, I could use Pinterest for my business. I could use Facebook this way. I Mm -hmm. there Facebook has creator studio. Uh, Pinterest has uh, tailwind. I'm like, this is, this is crazy. So, you know, I, for me, it's still a lot of work, like because I love filming. Sometimes I like editing videos. But going, <laughs> Once in a blue moon. <laughs> but going towards um, Pinterest posts, uh, that's not even blogging, but you still have to have like really good SEO for your Pinterest and your Facebook, right? Mm-hmm. So let's go to blogging. How important is blogging for your business, especially for wedding videographers because I think for us we just post videos and that's it like we let the people do we let the 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 bride and the groom do the words we're not going to type anything at least for me so how do you think um blogging should be handled by wedding videographers is my question that's a great question so blogging is so important and it's not just to showcase work but it's SEO. I mean, it's 110% an SEO strategy. I know for us as a business, we look at it as solely an SEO strategy. Like our blogs don't come off as SEO strategy because we blend it in, but that is first and foremost, one of the best ways for you to capture your clients is through SEO. Um, And what's so great about blogging is that blogging can dictate your marketing strategy. So your, what goes on your blog can then be what you talk about on Instagram, which can then be a newsletter. Like you can take, like we can break down a blog into 10 different social media posts or a newsletter topic. Um, so for a lot of our clients and for a lot of 
people who I help with, with their businesses, I'm like, your blog should be the cornerstone of your content marketing. Like that should be the piece de resistance. Like that's what we should focus on and then break it down. So for videographers, just posting that video without any text, Google isn't, Google doesn't see like that. Like Google is reading. So if Google can't read any info, it's not really going to categorize it as super important or super valid. So for videographers, I want you to also think about having posts and not just your videos that have text, but also coming up with educational and informational posts because those do great on Google, especially for targeted areas. So if you're targeting a certain city, a certain area, a certain venue, there are you know dozens of blog posts you could do surrounding that. So typically videographers are like not maybe the first or second, right? There may be a few vendors down the road. Um, it just depends on the couple. For some people, it'll be earlier, but for the most part, like they might have their planner in their venue before they find you. Well, why not target top planners? Why not target top venues? Because if they're already looking there, they're going to be seeing your stuff. So as a bride planning my own wedding, even with experience, I found some of my vendors that way. And I'm getting married in a city where I've planned over a hundred weddings, but there's always new vendors. There's always new things. People go, you know, change their industry. So I was able to find some of my vendors just from searching my venue. Like imagine coming up every time someone searches one of the top venues that you love shooting at. I mean, that's incredible, right? Because then you can do, and it's also, you know, you can collaborate with that venue, do a short 10 minute, five minute, three minute video for them and talk about it, write a whole blog post about that venue and be like, here's a quick three minute tour of their ceremony space or break or do a 10 minute video and break it up into three minute segments for blogs. So maybe you have a favorite venue, do a quick video on this is the best ceremony spot. This is the best reception spot. This is how your lighting should be. This is the best, um, I mean, anything. Like this is our favorite photographer to work with in this area, things like that. So it's also tying in those vendor relations. So then you're getting backlinks because the, hopefully your vendor relations, you know, they share it. So I would say it's not just about the video. It definitely is. So showcasing your video, but also thinking of how can I turn a wedding into a topic? So maybe it's micro weddings. Why should a bride have a video for a, a micro wedding or elopement? Why is that important? You know why it's important. They don't know why it's important. So how can you be on top of mind of importance for them? I think it's really important. And blogging can do that. And then again, you take that blog post. We break it up into a ton of little pieces. And then look, you have content for the next six weeks. Gotcha. A 10-minute video. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, it's, it, it's just so refreshing to have uh, this aspect of the business. I, I just feel like where VA, ha having a VA, having an agency would really help with someone's brand, right? Mm -hmm. That's Because that's pretty much what you're concentrating on is not just content, not just, you know, selling, but as the brand as a whole. Do you also do branding? Like, you, you know, do you provide the services where um, they could get headshots or something, or you could suggest at least what to do with their website? Is it, is it more like a done for you or do you have? So there's definitely some different ones. So different places may offer different. So some people are more branding and strategy. So maybe they're like, all right, what's the visuals of the brand? Um, a copywriter might be someone who would help more specifically with the language you use. Um, I know for our business, we do do a lot of strategy. So we do a lot of strategy sessions where we take that 10 foot step back at your business and we see what's working and not working with your marketing. So we can look and say, your website's not connecting because I can't tell what you do. <laughs> Like little things like that, like say having a third eye or, hey, let's come up with six months of content on a call. So we have a call where we can come up with six months of content in 30 minutes. I mean, I can knock that out in 15, 20 minutes with someone on the phone. We just hash it out. So I think you can definitely find people for every aspect. So if you're someone who's thinking, I have a team member who can blog or I feel confident with my virtual assistant to blog but I don't know what to talk about. I don't know how to make this into a strategy. Then you can do like more of a strategy session 
where then you talk to someone who's like, all right, here's what you should be talking about for the next six months. Here's, you know, the overall view of, of your wedding season. So that's another aspect that I think is becoming more and more popular is maybe you do have some team members, but you need more of that strategy. That's also definitely an option as well. We, we do offer strategy sessions similar to that because I notice a lot of, a lot of clients might be at that stage where like, all right, I have a few interns, but I don't know what to get. I don't know what to market. What do I market? Okay. Okay. So let's go to now that, for example, I'm ready to, I've decided that, okay, I'm going to outsource. I don't know where to start. Mm -hmm. Um, What, what do I need to, what are the telltale signs that I need to outsource and how do I adjust? How do I, you know, adapt to my, my company? How do I adjust my company to be able to accommodate outsourcing? That is a super great question. So I actually have a tip that I'm trying to find super quick. I love, I love the, I love that the the blogging, I love that you could also do Pinterest. I love that you could also do, you know, mentioning Facebook because everyone's moving out away from Facebook, but I just feel like Facebook is still here. Like, it is. you know, see, <laughs> like having that outside perspective is just so refreshing. I'm no, sorry. Face- no, Facebook is definitely a thing because I think we forget that some couples are more old school and maybe their parents are doing a lot of stuff. We forget about the parents. And I was, a, because I was a vendor in the deep South in Savannah, their parents were like one-on-one. Like, I think I talked to the moms and grandmas more than I ever talked to the groom. It's, they're on there. So why are you not trying to attract them? Especially if they're pitching and money or helping pick, like, why would you not want to attract them? I think it's so important just because like maybe younger generations aren't on there. Doesn't mean thirties and 40 year olds aren't on there. I'm right. 30 and I'm on there still. The, Every time, because we we have an office, uh, every time they bring in grandma or mom, that's that's my cue to like, let's make sure they cry when they watch yeah. the video. And sure enough, they do. And I'm like, yes. So, yes. Yeah. When I used to own a bridal boutique, it was the same. We looked at mom and grandma. We're like, all right, when she cries, we're done. We close, we wrap this sale up. They don't try on any more gowns because this is it. Like <laughs> we got them. <laughs> it's so funny. Like everyone, everyone's just, you know, like TikTok's the new thing. Everyone go to TikTok. And I'm like, these are 17 year old kids that are watching your videos. You know, they're not getting married (laughs) anytime soon, (laughs) but I might, I might be wrong, but that, that was my thing with TikTok. I'm like, that's weird. Okay. Anyway, so sorry. I interrupted you when you were looking, uh, going to mention your tip about um, how to get your business ready for outsourcing. Yes. So one of the, earliest suggestions I have is like, when you're thinking, you're like, all right, this sounds good. Start to write down details. So I want you to a day in the life when you're at your desk, when you're editing, or when you're thinking about a wedding, write down where the things are getting stuck. So that way you can start having a list of, okay, I'm getting stuck when it comes to blogging. I'm getting stuck when it comes to sending the contract, um, following up with vendors, grabbing vendor Instagram handles, like even as minute as that is, I need someone to grab my Instagram vendor handles. That's something we've done for clients is created a spreadsheet with their Instagram handles. So just start writing those down. So that way, when you start talking to people, you're like, okay, these are kind of what I'm thinking. And also start to think about like SOPs. So standard operating procedures, which I know most people do not have in their business. And that's totally fine. It can even be something like a loom video. So let's say you're handing over some of your workflow stuff, record a loom video of you doing it. And then your virtual assistant can watch it and say, okay, cool. This makes sense. Here's a few suggestions. Maybe do a loom video of you creating a week's worth of content on Instagram. So maybe you're going to outsource to an Instagram strategist record yourself on your computer, planning out a week, just talking it out. Little things like that can be super beneficial when you bring someone into your business. Cause you can say, all right, <laughs> I want Instagram. This is how I run it. Let me know your thoughts, feedback, and always be open to feedback. I think one of the biggest things is you have to also be willing to outsource. 
I have had many potential clients shoot themselves in the foot because they would not let go because they were like unaccepting that they needed help or that we could help. So just know that it might take a minute for their voice to match yours exactly. When we blog, I want to say our blogs are perfect the first time every time we work with a client, but they're not always. Sometimes the voices have to change. Sometimes they want to tweak the layout and the images and that's fine. But be willing to say that and to know that they'll get it right the next time, right? Like just because, you know, maybe their feed laid out isn't exactly what you love. You have to be willing. It's a new team member. Just like if you had an associate on your team, you wouldn't just fire them because they got the first day wrong. Like you have to be willing to know that it is a little bit of a working progress. You do have to do some stuff. A lot of times people, when they outsource, they're like, oh, I'll just hand it off and they'll do it. We need some input. We need some back and forth. Like I can't just write a blog unless I know what the topic is. Like we can't just come up. We're not in your head. So one of the first things is once you start figuring out what it is, just have that mindset reality that it's okay. You're allowed to outsource. And if you're the one that's going to keep getting in the way, then it's not going to be successful no matter who you hire or what you end up outsourcing. And to also start to think about, you know, financially, what do you want to spend? If you're, but if you are just starting out, maybe it's three to $400 a month. And you're like, I literally can't afford that. But in six months, I want to outsource more. Just keep in mind, you know, that some things cost more than people think. So your Instagram strategist is going to be over 300 a month. We're talking three to 800 a month for five to six images for strategy. That's just because think about how it's, that's 15, 20 hours a month of work easily plus strategy plus calling images. Plus like there's, it's not just Instagram. So a blog is going to be 75 to 175 a post sometimes more if it's longer, because again, that's hours and hours of keyword research, SEO, and you're also paying them for their knowledge. So just like when someone hires a photographer, videographer, you're paying them for the years of experience. You're not paying a brand new guy 10 grand, like you're paying a seasoned pro. So also just keep that in mind when it comes to pricing is that you can also start small. So a lot of our clients might start with a small package, two blogs a month. And then as wedding season picks up, hey, let's do four. We're, we're doing good. We're getting the results. So know that you can also adjust it based on how your business does. And what I teach my students is there are ebbs and flows in the wedding industry and it's okay to ride them out. So our clients know that during slow seasons, if they need to go down to two blogs a month because it's dead, that's fine. I'm not going to like fire them for that because we understand the ebbs and flows, but we still want to keep marketing. You don't want to just stop. You don't want to just stop the momentum. So it is a commitment in terms of long-term. I always suggest if you're just looking for a quick one month, this is not the time. This, you, you know you want to spend three to six months, if not longer, outsourcing. Like we have clients we have worked with for four years, nonstop for four years. So that's not always the case, but also sometimes people come in and they're like, oh, I just want one month of Pinterest. That doesn't do anything. Like I, that's just not realistic. Like I can't get you numbers just like you can't just be on the first page of Google tomorrow. So just have that realistic expectation of, okay, it's a long-term strategy, right? Like I'm hiring a virtual assistant. This might be a few months with them and it might grow and it might change and that's fine. So pretty much you're just hiring an extra person, right? Mm -hmm. You can't hire someone to, you know, it's not like a cleaning service where you just, okay, just come in once a month and then, yeah, That's clean it, up yeah. my mess. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. And I think you get the most return on investment when you have that relationship too. Just like any of your employees or anyone you have in your business, the longer you work with someone, the more valuable they become because they are able to see stuff so much better and, and just open your eyes to all new things. So it's, it's, it's a great partnership. Right. Yeah. Uh, the long, yeah, you're right. The longer you work with each other, the more you, the, the easier it is to, you know, like especially the voice i've never realized that that it takes a while to have your voice and it's great um and also thank you for mentioning like a ballpark figure of what people should expect when it comes to these services i was going to ask you but i'm like should i ask her it might yeah we can definitely talk about i mean numbers it's one of those things like it will vary so like because we have a lot more experience my agency is more expensive 
because we, we know we're going to get results. Like we're not even thinking twice about it. Like we know. So a, a newer VA might be the 20 to $30 hour range. So there's two different ways that you're going to hire a VA really the the two main ones there's okay. There's three. I'll cover all three if that's fine. Like the three kind of ways. So first is going to be the hourly retainer. So that's great. If you are not hundred percent sure what you want to outsource, or maybe you are thinking, I only need someone for a few months to, to help me get through this busy wedding season. I'm not looking for a long-term partner. Um, hourly retainers can be great. So what that means is you're hiring someone for them to reserve 10, 15, 20 hours a month, however their packages are laid out. So you would pay, let's say it's 10 hours a month, $30 an hour, $300 a month. So that's a little bit more intensive in terms of on your end, because you need to assign tasks. We can't just do stuff without being assigned. So that's a little bit, um, sounds really great to start, but then sometimes it's harder for wedding pros because then they realize, oh, I have to like tell them like what I want to get done in my business. And they can definitely help you strategize ideas, come up with ideas like your virtual assistant can help, but just know that you might know a little bit more stuff up front to give them to do right away. And then they'll track the hours and you'll pay them monthly. The second one are going to be more package based. So this is where we're at in our business because our packages are very laid out for specific reasons. So for example, it could be an Instagram package. So maybe the person charges $400 for five posts a month you get 10 templates for Instagram stories and um, culling of the images and things like that. So it'll be pretty specific what's in the package. So for example, blogging, our basic bread and butter to work with us is two blogs a month. So that's just like a basic package. So what's nice with packages is that you at least know what you're getting. It's a little bit easier for you to assign stuff when you know exactly what you're paying for. So that's option two. And then option three, which is not as common, and this is more for like certain aspects is day rates. So that's where you book someone for like eight hours or six hours of their time. That's gonna be more for someone out there who's thinking workflows. So maybe you don't have a workflow set up and you're hearing me say that word and you're going, I don't have that. You, you could hire someone to either come in, spend eight weeks on it, or you could pay more. So it's a premium service, but you could get it done in a day. I know people who could, build out your Dubsado in six hours. You pay a little bit more because it's not going to take you eight weeks, but wouldn't you rather have it? Like, it's one of those, like, it costs more, but for you as a business owner, I know for me, I'm like, yep, get it done. Um, I, I, I don't know that that existed. Um, is it, yeah. what's like a ballpark figure? What's like an average for someone to just come in, do the thing for six hours and leave? Yeah. So it depends on their expertise. So for workflow, so for example, um, we used to offer workflow. So for workflows, we're talking 1500 to 2000 for a longer term, a day rate might be closer to 2000 to 4000. Cause it might also depend on how many workflows, if you have different parts of your business, cause think about it, they're setting up a whole system. We're talking emails and invoices and quotes. If you're doing something like some people offer day rates for design. So graphic design, Maybe you need a couple web pages done and you want to just have someone do it. Like you need a sales page, you're offering a new education workshop, or I just made a new freebie. You can usually pay someone a day rate. So that might be something where 800 to $2,000 for websites, depending on how many pages, like I've had a few clients say, Hey, I need a sales page by next week, you know, or some other good day rates are you, some virtual assistants do offer like intensives like that, where you have a big problem. So maybe it's organizing your emails. Maybe your Google drive has thousands of folders that you haven't looked at. You could probably find someone who would charge you a rate to just get it done for you in a day. That might, that pricing, I'm not hundred percent sure. Cause it would depend on like how much of a mess you have, but I have certainly see people offer that where they're like, I haven't touched my pixie set or adjusted my pixie set, please come in and save me type thing. So that's another third option that's becoming more popular. So I would say the day rate is becoming more of an option that people are offering, which is kind of cool. I think it's a really great offering. That's crazy. Workflow. I, why am I not just doing workflow for a living? <laughs> you could offer workflows for a living. I have quite a few students who literally 
just do like one system, one type of workflow. That's crazy. Because if you know it's how to nuts. do it, that's a that's something that someone else doesn't know. Yeah. Well, to, to anyone listening, workflow for a CRM or whatever is it's going to save you so much time. We figured out our workflow in like a year. And mm-hmm. I wish we just paid someone this much money to figure it yes. out in a day. Ugh. I mean, imagine the hours it saves. So that's why some of those rates can be a little surprising or you have someone do a workflow build out and you're like, no, this would have taken you, like you said, a year. We hop on a call, we hash it out, we build it. Two weeks later, you're a happy camper. Like that saves you that year, not just the hours to plan it, but then the hours you would have done with every client implementing it. Right. I, I think the biggest problem is, well, also you mentioned in one of your tips um, about uh, the SOP, like uh, record, uh, what, what did you say? Like a loomed? Yeah, like a loom, L-O-O-M. So it's a free okay. video recording. Ah, okay. So, so you can record quick little videos of your screen and talk. And that way you can just like send it out. Gotcha. So I was saying, um, you know, record something like that because you guys aren't mind readers. And, (laughs) you know, when I, when I told one of my friends about outsourcing and, you know, like how the extent of what I'm outsourcing, he's like, no, I can't give up the creative part or I can't give this up because this is what I love to do. But I'm like, but you know, it's going to make you more money. It's going to save you more time. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a hard thing for, for creatives, just letting go of control. Oh yes. That is hands down. One of the biggest just objections I think we get in our business and in my students business is just, especially the wedding industry. I mean, you are so connected. It is a exhausting an injury. It's an, it's an industry that you have to be passionate about. No one does this because it looks fun on TV. <laughs> like they stick around for 10 or 15 years because it, they are passionate about it. So when you're that passionate, it makes sense. You're going to be a little nervous. And like, I, I understand that when I was running my bridal boutique, I was always like nervous about sales associates. Cause I'm like, that's money, but then you have to learn to trust them and let them be free. <laughs> and like, you know, take over stuff for you. So I, I understand. So sometimes we get in our own way. Whenever people tell me, Hey, I want to be a wedding videographer. I'm like, you better love doing this because. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Can't do this for the money. Not in this industry. (laughs) No. Oh my gosh. When I started, when I opened the bridal boutique, my friends were like, Oh my gosh, I love say yes to the dress. And I'm like, I don't think you know how much I get yelled at, how little I get paid. I'm like in a fitting room with a naked person. Someone's yelling at me at some point of the day because something went wrong. Like, I don't think you know how much damage control and that I also get paid next to nothing. So, yeah. You better love this. This You have to love it. Yeah. (laughs) For sure. (laughs) So, okay. Um, I, I already asked you about... The rates, that's great. Uh, and then we, we already talked about the tips to, to adjust your, your business to outsourcing. Um, what else can, if we haven't talked about all of it, what else can VAs do for wedding videographers in particular? Yeah, so I think for you guys, some stuff that would be a little more specific is if you have YouTube or some kind of online video channel, I feel like YouTube is probably the bigger one, but I know there's like the Neo, but if you have YouTube, you can have someone help manage that. They can be the person that maybe does the intro or outro, or maybe you do all the editing, but they upload it. They write the description, they monitor comments, they do all of that. So YouTube can be an incredible one for you guys if you use that as a platform. Another one can be, I think, graphic design. I feel like a lot of times, there's a lot of things you have to design from PDFs to pricing guides to pamphlets. You can hire someone to do that for you. There's no reason every year if your pricing goes up, you shouldn't have to do that. My clients send that to me. I do it for them. I go in and design, we update it, we send it back. Another one that could be editing. So video editing, I feel like would probably be a great one, especially if you're maybe thinking about at some point taking clips of it to turn into a blog. 
So let's say you're thinking, you're like, Adriana, I'm not going to do that blog part. Well, why don't you hire someone to make those clips from videos you already have? You don't need to sit there and spend hours. You can do that. They can send it to the VA and the VA can do the write-up for it. So I definitely think that those are some good ones that can be outside of like the workflow, the admin, and even maybe assisting. So some, some people I know, because they have a wedding planning background, they might be better when it comes to maybe timeline assistance, logistics, things like that. So for you guys, it could be someone that helps reach out to the planner to be the liaison of like, where do we have to be and when, what's this look like, you know, whatever you guys need to do as a team. So that could be another option for you could also be someone who's more um, in communication with some of the vendors a little bit more. If you don't want to have to be the person who's always answering the email, <laughs> you don't want to be. No. So you could have someone <laughs> who does that, especially if that person has experience with timelines and wedding planning, like they can easily jump in and probably after a 20, 30 minute training session with you and understanding your workflow, be like, oh yeah, this makes sense. So that could be another great one. And also team management. I notice a lot of times when people have teams, they forget that you can have someone help with that. They feel like they have to be the team manager and, and manage all the people. You could have someone, like I mentioned earlier, be the person who's the liaison between team members or sends out schedules or things like that. So for those who might have larger businesses, you can also even outsource things like that. You could outsource bookkeeping. Um, I mean, bookkeeping, I feel like I say, I don't do buy outsource bookkeeping because I won't touch it with a 10 foot pole, but oh, yeah. you could definitely outsource pretty much everything in your business. I think there's very little things other than recording the video and being there at the wedding, I think every other step you could find right. someone to help with it. Especially now that everyone is just hunkered down and on their phones the entire time. If you go out on a shoot on a weekend, might as well have someone blog for you, or I, I mean like post on social media for you. You just send exactly. them the photo or whatever, yep. and then they do the you know, it's just like hitting two birds with one stone. I love mm -hmm. that you recommended timeline assistance because I actually talked to one of my friends who's an elopement photographer. And he said, for extra service, I just do the timeline for them because they don't yes. have a planner. So yeah, that's a huge part of my friend's elopement business too, is that she's realizing how much of it is the timeline. Like it ends up becoming where 80% of, of, of your package is actually the timeline, because especially if there's more than a few vendors, couples don't think about that you have to show up early or that things, they don't realize that it might take 20 minutes to get to A to B. So maybe we should add in time. For, like they don't think about that. So that's your job is to be like, no, this is the timeline. You're yeah. going to start at this time. We're going to end at this time. And that's just how it's going to be. Exactly. They're like, oh, we, we're just going to need video for an hour. It's just a ceremony. I'm like, you don't yep. know that there's prep and there's, there. yeah. So yeah, that you have to get there before that you need a space to get there before. Yeah. It's definitely the education of like, I Spe don't just show up. Like <laughs> Yeah. Especially here in California, parking at the beach. Oh my God. I can't, yeah. ima I can't imagine. Fun. Like, yeah. In Georgia, it was always, cause they all, most of our weddings were downtown Savannah. So there's zero parking. So you have to accommodate. I need 45 minutes to find a parking spot in a garage. Cause then I have to hike all my stuff to the square. Cause it's, I'm not gonna be able to park there. Yeah. It's tough. So yeah, I, I love that. I love that you could hire someone to edit the short videos for you. That's great. Um, and then answering emails. I hate answering emails. Thank God I'm married to someone who's amazing at doing all of these things. <laughs> exactly. Or you so, just marry someone who does it, you know? Yeah. You don't have to pay them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think she's getting paid. I'm not sure. <laughs> You're like, maybe, maybe. <laughs> um, and then the team managers, that, that's great. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to team managing, I feel like the, the one thing that really helped for us are the, the apps like Trello or um, Azure Dev, DevOps for like the more advanced people. Yeah. I want to ask you, what are your favorite apps or software or websites that helps you with when it comes to like outsourcing, at least like the minimum tasks? Yeah. So 
would you like to know both what we use in our business and what are we recommend our clients to use? Kind of a little bit of a little well, bit of both. Whatever you think is well, I, I guess what what your favorites are. So whatever yeah. you use and you recommend, that that would be great. Yeah. So first is definitely a CRM system. <laughs> <laughs> so having something in, cause actually a lot of wedding photographers and, and planners will come to us and they just send contracts in an email and have them print it. And I'm like, no. So a CRM system, cause it's easy for us. It also allows our onboarding. I also think having, like you said, a task manager, like Trello or Asana, I think a lot of times as creatives, I know I'm a paper pencil. So if you saw my desk, you would literally see paper and notes. But all of that is also then duplicated into Asana so I remember. So I think I always suggest to my clients, if you don't have a system of any kind, use even just Trello because you're going to want to keep track of when blogs go up. Like I can tell you your schedule, but if you don't write it down, I can't like tap you on the shoulder every single time and be like, did you look yet? Like sometimes it's nice when they have something to keep them in check. And I think it also helps with their organization. So we use Asana, but there's a ton of options. So even just something for you to start outlining your systems, like make a card on Trello of this is my process for this. Another great one is, let's see. So Dubsado, Asana, when it comes to like social media, I always recommend if you have, if you don't want to post in real time, something like Planoly can be really great or plan. There's quite a few of them out there. We use Planoly. Most of our clients use Planoly. And that can be a great way for you to just automate some of it. You might naturally want to go in and do real-time video, real-time pictures behind the scenes, but it can give you a good base if you just have three images scheduled a week. I mean, that's huge. Then you don't have to worry about it if you forget. So that's another great one we use. And then I would also say when it comes to simplifying certain things there are tools that make life easier so for blogging we use blog stomp so it compresses and makes these layouts so all those pretty collages you don't have to do in photoshop like you used to <laughs> back in the day I did them in photoshop you can use something like blog stomp and it works i will say i know there is a program called narrative that a lot of people are getting into i advise it is not the best because it's a third party outside of your blog. So if it stops working, you lose access. You can't have a VA do it because it's only on your computer. So I can never, as a virtual assistant, I could never edit your blogs for you because they're done in a third party system. You could never edit my blogs because they're done on a third party system. Like it, you can only view what's on your computer so it's just not good if you're going to outsource. I've had a few clients who have narrative and I'm like, we can't use it because there's no way for me to ever look at what you've written. Like you can look at the blog, but on the back end, it doesn't show it as a post. It's the weirdest thing. So I would, so narrative and also because narrative is third party, it doesn't do as good for SEO because it's one extra like thing that has to be loaded. So that's a little thing is I recommend blog stomp for the image compressing, not narrative because narrative is just gonna, I've had some, uh, some already some clients have some issues with it. And it, I feel like it just came out about six or seven months ago. And we're already starting to see like some weird uh, quirks with that. Okay, man, I'm looking at your website and I'm like, oh, this is so, so nice that you have. So this, the creative VA Academy, uh, it actually, <laughs> Tell us a little bit more about your Creative VA Academy. Yeah, so I have the Creative VA Academy and it is a creative, we have digital courses, we have face, a free Facebook group. Um, I also offer one-on-one -on -one coaching and group coaching for those looking to get into the creative industry. So when I got started, there weren't a ton of us who worked with wedding pros and graphic designers and product creatives. It's a completely different mindset because like we mentioned earlier, they're connected to their service more than a dentist will be <laughs> like, they're just passionate. So there's a lot of stuff that we offer that courses out there didn't provide. So I did it myself. So we offer our masterclass, which is our big one. That's the, I take you handheld in small groups. It's not one of those courses where a hundred thousand people join. Like we cap at 15 to 20 per round, because again, it's a group coaching. Like we start your business from 
what are you doing, what a virtual assistant is to your packages, to your services, to your pricing, to your ideal client, like to your website, like it's A to Z. And then we offer some smaller things that are like you want to offer Pinterest, we offer a Pinterest course. And then we have a lot more coming out this year that are more niche down to specific tasks. So we'll have a blogging course and things like that. So it's just one of those, like I mentioned, a lot of people in it are wedding pros as well. The pandemic was hard. A lot of wedding pros had to pivot and were like, saw this industry and reached out to me and they're like, it might be a year before I can plan weddings because I'm in California or I'm in New York and some of the states that are more closed realistically, you know, how do you make income? So if you have those incredible skills, you can do exactly what I do and offer it out. So my direct competition are coming out of my course and it's incredible. Like my, like whenever people are like Googling, I love seeing my students up there with me. Cause I'm like, yes, like we're doing it. So that's what I have. It's for creatives in general. We just tend to attract more of the wedding pros and those who want to work with it wedding industry, which I'm totally fine with because I think it's a, I think it's super needed. I think there could be a million VAs for wedding pros and there would still be a need. So that's my little course. That's my free group. I have a free Facebook group. And then I do clubhouse rooms where we just, we talk everything out. We, we work everything out together. This is so great. I was going to ask you, like, if I decided to just become a VA and make this whole thing and I'm like going through your side, like, oh, yeah, that's right. That's so great. Um, you can come join us, even if you're just thinking of like a side. So some of our students are even just an off season, like they're planners. They're only doing it for three months out of the year, but still three months out of the year. That's pretty good money. That's cool. And you have, you said you have like uh, smaller courses like Pinterest, or is it just like included in the one big package? So we have the, 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 the masterclass has everything I've ever created because it's just, I just, I'm like, you can just have access. I'm not going to charge you. So the Pinterest elective is separate. And then we are having new ones come out this year. So in 2021, we're going to have more niche down. So we'll do one on blogging. We have a marketing. So for those who might not be super brand new, like they have their business, they feel good. We're going to start offering stuff to niche down. So we're going to start offering more. How can we niche down to certain specific things? So a lot, lots we're thinking about. That's cool. I love, love, love this. This is great. Um, Last question. No, not really last question, but uh, if there's anything that you'd want the listener or the viewer to take away from this whole interview, what would it be? That outsourcing is okay. That it doesn't mean you're a bad business owner. That it doesn't mean you're a bad wedding pro. Your friends probably all do it and it's totally fine. And I think it's becoming more and more acceptable the last few years in particular that it's totally fine to not do it all yourself because you're going to hit that stage where you can't do it all. And it's totally fine. It's part of growth. It's a beautiful part of growth. Like when you get to that stage, that's a pretty big pat on the back. Like when you're getting to that stage where you're like, I can't do it all. That means you're doing really well. So you shouldn't see it. I think sometimes wedding pro seat is like, oh man, I'm not, not good enough. Cause I can't do this. No, you're doing great. Focus on what you're doing. You don't need to do those little pieces. I remember when we started hiring um, in-house wedding uh, video editors and they they just pushed out videos like really quick. And I'm like, we're making all these videos and I'm not doing anything. This is great. <laughs> I feel so accomplished. Yes, because it there and you know, they're doing great. So it's just like so nice to be like, I don't have to edit that now. I just right. have someone. It just it's done and it's great. And it's worth right. every penny. We, like we, it's, it's yeah. worth it. we we got to concentrate on the business part, like the promoting and the branding part, as yes. opposed to like being inside the office, just editing your life away. And then you go out to networking events and people don't know who you are. So it, it's, it really helped um, outsourcing everything. Yeah. Well, our photographers, whenever I have a client who's a photographer and they don't ed- outsource edit- editing, editing yet, I'm like, are you okay? Is there a reason why you're not outsourcing editing? Because that's such a big part of your job, but you can also have someone do a lot of it for you. Yeah. I think being a creative is um, the create part of the creative process is to start creating, then have someone finish it for you. And then you kind of do the polishing. 
that's yes. that's a creative process for me as a business as well. So I, I feel like that's a good a, way to look at it because it's so true. Just because you're outsourcing things doesn't mean you're not taking a final look at it. Doesn't mean you might add a few things like, and that's fine because like you said, it's just the creative process. Yeah. That's th- my gosh. I'm so happy. Thank you so much for, for being on this show. I'm sure people have learned a lot. If not letting go of control, just you know, <laughs> opening their minds. Just a little bit. Just a little bit of control. I'm not going to ask for much to start with. I'm just going to ask for you to have that little bit. <laughs> Give up control. It's the best thing. <laughs> it's liberating. Yes. My clients love it. My clients are always like, at first, they're like, I only have a few things. And then before you know it, it's like, I have all this. I have all this. Like they just start pushing it. And it's great because then they start to like release it into the universe. Oh. And like, all right, you're taking it. You're taking it. That's good. Okay. Uh, before we finish, I would love it if you tell the listeners and the viewers um, where they could reach you if they're interested in knowing more. Perfect. So you can find me online at avaandthebee.com. I'm also Ava and the Bee across Instagram, Pinterest, all of the things. So you can find me that way. You can shoot me a DM. You can go through a contact form, whatever you would like. And then the courses are the creative VA academy.com. And then same for social media across the board. Adriana, thank you so much for being here. Hopefully I get to, uh, be I get to convince my wife that we should join the VA, <laughs> the <laughs> VA program because hey. it's it's I, I'm pretty sure we're still gonna learn a lot and um hopefully I get to see you in person soon. Yes, thank you so much for having me. It was really great. I really appreciate it. All the best to you. Thank you.